with us. So, right. How many of you are aware about Google Summer of Code already? If you're not aware, I could be introducing more about what is it and um, and then talk more about what we are going to uh, uh, do in this session. Uh, so can you all raise the hi hand if you're already aware about Google Summer of Code? OK. <laughs> Thank you. I think most of you are aware it's uh, bringing the student developers uh, to the open source community. It's all about that. Uh, so this, uh, the session is going to be uh, mostly the students introducing their projects and getting the feedback and dis discussing with their mentors. If they are getting any questions from IRC, we could discuss uh, how they can improve with their project on their uh, on ongoing projects. OK, uh, so let me introduce about myself. I'm Jamini. Um, so I come from Sri Lanka. Mm, I'm one of the uh, a coordinator for Google Summer of Code with Debian. Um, so Debian has been participating in uh, Google Summer of Code uh, from 2005. And uh, it's been 13 years it has been participating. And we had a break in uh, 2017. And now we are back again in 2018 with Google Summer of Code. And these are the team for GSOC uh, coordination. Uh, I'm representing the team, uh, Daniel Pocock, uh, Alexander, and it's me. This year, we have accepted 20, uh, 25 students. And that's the link for the projects um, that are ongoing uh, this year. So there is an uh, interesting uh, GSOC statistic uh, this year. Uh, this year, we have uh, selected, uh, I mean, th this was from the Google open source bloggy blog. And they said uh, there are three st four students accepted from Kosovo. And um, um, the three students are from our Debian community. And they are here joining, us, uh, uh, joining with us uh, to introduce more about their uh, project. Um, I hope that without wasting more time, I could give the uh, chance for the students to introduce, uh, to talk more about their projects. Um, Arthur, can you? So you hear me? That's fine. Yeah? Nice. So, hello, my name is Artu, there is Posti. I'm going to talk about my GSOC project that's titled Improve GSOC Tracker to Better Support Debian Teams. My mentor is Lucas Kanashiro, and my co-mentor is Rafael Hetzog. Okay. <coughs> Provide you some context about why we are doing this. So basically, Debian Teams use it to rely on package entropy tracker, which is a system that basically gets some information about um, the packages from Debian, from early off and display some kind of information inside tables and some categories. Um, and we also had inside our Debian infrastructure the tracker Debian org that you probably have used before that basically get the same kind of information from several sources inside Debian and put this in a Debian or in a web application. So for example, you have the page of a specific package, rub defaults, and you can get all the information related to that package. <coughs> and what we want to do, because patch has not been being maintained anymore, and also he used it to track the package repository from Elioth. And what we want to do is to continue to support them and teams to track the health of the package and to prioritize their work efforts by migrating the patch features to this tracker. <coughs> and also, you want to track source repository instead of Elioth. So what are the results we have so far? So basically, if you enter in a team page of any team inside this tracker, you are going to get this kind of table. So basically, we have uh, the first column with the package name, uh, the second column with the change log version in the VCS of that package, the third column with the archive version. Uh, we also are tracking the bugs here. And the last column has the upstream version okay, of this package. And <coughs> another interesting uh, feature that we are providing here is that if you pass your mouse over one of that fields, 
you are going to get more detailed information about that specific field. Okay, so for example, here we have uh, the information and links to BTS related to the bugs of, uh, that exist for that package. Okay, <coughs> we also have provide we also have provide some categories. So basically, we could have more than one categories of package tables. For example, we could have like packages with RC bugs, a package that has already a new version in the upstream, and we have a specific page to display each of these package tables. Okay? And we have a large number of teams inside Debian, inside specific, specifically inside the distro track. So we also provide this um, autocomplete text field so you can easily find your team, the team that, that you are interested in. <coughs> and that was my results. And so far, we have faced some challenges. Uh, first is that Distro Track has a generic purpose architecture because it tends to be used by several distros. So it is also being used by Kali community. So basically, everything you are going to do, you have to make it extensible, have to design it to be extensible by these specific applications that implement the specific features from the, the distros. Uh, also, the database design is challenging because you have to collect all of this, few, all this data from several um, database tables. Um, and some of this context is serializing in JSON fields inside the database, so it's not easy to get this. And also, we have facing some problems, some performance problems, because we are handling a large number of table cells dynamically. So we are basically building each of these table, table cells uh, in runtime. Okay. And until the end of this talk, I plan to create a cache mechanism. I'm already working on that. I propose a measure crash for it to try to improve the performance of table handling. <coughs> I also want to have all my, my Merge requests are accepted inside Salsa. Um, we also want to provide more package tables with uh, new categories. Uh, and also provide a new feature that you could be able to sort the table content based on colors. For example, I want to sort my, my, my table based on the number of bugs, for example. <coughs> and the results that we got good results so far and I have received available feedback from the Debian community, and I have a lot of ideas to continue work on this after the GSOC as well. Um, the GSOC has been an amazing experience. I have been learn, learn a lot with Kanashiro, Headzog, and other community members. Um, I will keep contributing to Debian, of course. Um, thank you for the Debian community to provide me this opportunity to come here to DebiConf and present my work. Uh, let's get moving on. Thank you. Test, one, two, three, test. Fine. So, let just, okay. My, pro my project is called uh, Port Kali Packages to Debian, and my mentors are Rafael, Rafael Herzog and Gianfranco Costa Magna. Unfortunately, they, they didn't come to this year's DebConf, and um, we are from the PKG, the security tools packaging team, so this is uh, something that I've been working on for the past uh, one year and a half, I think. I started packaging uh, on 2016, and on 2017 I started working on the security tools packaging team because this is something that really interests me. And so w what actually is Kali Linux? Kali Linux is a digital forensics and pen testing distribution. It has like lots of packages is the uh, by far the most uh, used distribution for uh, capture the flag competitions and it's based on unstable and the thing is that Kali has a more relax relaxed policy than Debian's so that's the reason of the, the differences between the packages I mean the package that Kali has and, Kali, Kali and Debian hasn't so at first I needed to gather some information about what packages, packages can I work on and what are their problems, what I need to do in order to get them on main. So I first started using this dashboard from Kali Linux, and they are also use uh, 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 the tracker system that we use on Debian. And uh, this is a special dashboard where we can see uh, how many packages are on Kali Linux that aren't on Debian. 
uh, at the time, and this is from today, so there are 477 packages, but this includes dependencies, and lots of packages are not that really important, and some of them are not installed by default on Kali. So the first thing, I already knew some packages that I really would like to see on Debian, and uh, the first one was Metasploit, because it's one of the most used frameworks for pen testing, and I, I started by looking at, at what what should I do? And it was a really tough job because uh, Metasploit is currently bundling all of their gem dependencies because of uh, this is a huge problem. And there was a big discussion on the Debian mailing list about that, but whatever. I, I use Repology in order to see uh, what gestures were already packaging this stuff. And at the end, uh, there should be a about 40 packages that I had to package in order to see if it would work, because you have the version problem, because bundle uh, pins to a version, and uh, we decided not to do that during this project. So I had to uh, look for other packages, and I didn't want to do this manually. So I developed it as a kind of big shell script. It shouldn't be a shell script. It should be a proper programming language, but it, it got the work done, and this script uh, I gave it, I inputted a list of packages and it cloned all the, uh, the Kali uh, Git repository for this package, built each one of them and did some basic check, checks like I if it's a default uh, uh, Kali package, if, if it's buildable, because some of the packages are not buildable because we don't have the build dependencies on Debian right now. It checks if it's Deb5 compliant already, if we need main pages, if we need hardening, if, it, if it's bundling some gems, and if there are link errors. There is about uh, 20 or 30 something uh, columns on here, and so we have you have lots of info. And in order to know uh, which are the most important pages, Rafael gave me the idea to look for the number of uploads that the, the package had since since it hit it Kali. So I just I, I can only I can just only sort for the number of uploads and I, I have the most important ones. And this made the process really easy, like a lot more easy. And I keep I'm publishing this on our team wiki page and I will keep publishing this like forever until because it really helps other people that want to contribute to our team. And this is uh, other another software that I tried. How many time do I have? Okay. Uh, another package that I really want to see on Debian is Zaproxy. And for Zaproxy, I had to do a manual checking because it's a Java program. And um, Java has, I really don't like Java. So they, they bundle it like, Zaproxy is a great software, but uh, they bundle uh, some libraries and I talked to Upstream, and they are very receptive, and they they w want to help us, but uh, I didn't manage to package yet. I think I will do it after GSOC, but uh, uh, there are some packages that we need to introduce on Debian. Some of the packages Zaproxy, the Zaproxy Upstream is thinking about dropping them and putting just on the extensions because the core doesn't need them. And some of the packages are old and stuff like that. We have uh, that there's lots of problems that you can have. Uh, like there was a package which was GPL licensed, but it was linking against an uh, open SSL. And in order to do that, you have to add a license exemption to your license. And I talked to Upstream. It was called Pedis Upstream. Uh, it's a, a software used to break uh, Wi-Fi password, uh, like doing offline cracking. And Upstream decided to change its license to uh, BSD license, so we could release that on Debian. I can't remember right now if it's on the new QE or if I already hit it uh, unstable, but I think it's on the new QE. Uh, so in the end, uh, 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 the results are I made this script, which is going to be used for uh, uh, some time. I, there are some fixes that can be can can we we have to do on the script to make it better to make the checking better because we still have some corner cases where it doesn't work really well. Uh, we got some new packages on Debian that's really good. We got I, I have to make some upstream contributions because uh, for some packages I wrote their main page and I send it to upstream. Uh, there was this the Calpedi soft software that changed its licenses to to be like correctly compliant with with OpenSSL license. 
and uh, we've got now a better Kali and Debian for its users because when a package is just on Kali, uh, they don't like do hardening. That's one example of, of things that, that, that get bet gets better when the package hits that Debian because uh, when we enable hardening, sometimes we'll see problems that makes the package to fail to build and then we fix that, upload to Debian, and the, when the package hits unstable, uh, Kali starts syncing this package from Debian, and they can use uh, our infrastructure to do some QA and stuff like that. And, and they, there are two people from Kali that I know at least, Rafael and Sophie, and they work on Debian also, on, on our team. So when there's a new release, they, they upload their new release on Debian. So Debian users win by that also. And they already did uh, lots of work on their packages. So, yeah, I think that's 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 the the summary of the results. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good. Oh, just, just use it. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, I am Angelina Aju. I'm from Republic of Kosovo, and I'm here to represent my Google Summer of Code project. My mentors are Bruno, Milena, and Gabriela. So my project is a Mozilla Firefox web extension to give uh, free and. Uh, to give free software alternatives to the apps on the internet, so to help avoiding non-free apps and sites. So the goals for this project were that uh, while the user is surfing on the internet, the moment that he uses a non-free software, uh, our, my extension will detect it and then uh, give an alternative uh, to it, a free software alternative. The user should be able to stop it when it's annoying and the notifications should be only once per session. And we wanted to have like a, da a database through a self-hosted API or to use a free software device and then all this database to show it on a web page. I started by making, uh, by be making the user experience design being based on that because it should work like it should work fine. I made some sketches and mockups, and then the persona, and then defining bad habits of apps like a research, and then I started implementing it by coding it. I used Mozilla API to make my extension communicate with a web browser API. I created a JSON data file. It's like a proof of concept to just take the data because this is gonna be later on a real database. So the, lo uh, the code uh, logic uh, to select and display that are alternative based on the current uh, active website is that we should get the URL, identify it by sending, uh, identify it and then to send to that JSON file, check that and uh, based on that to give an alternative it, if it exists of course. We didn't wanna want to annoy the users to show like too much notification, so we, we, we made it only once per session for the current app, and it has the ability to stop and start it. We use the local storage to hold the user settings, and then we have to present this free software list through a web page that is generated by that database. This is like a simple diagram of basically what I just said. This is, these are some screenshots how it works. For example, Dropbox is a non-free software. And uh, this is the uh, notification that it gets. It says Dropbox has open source alternatives like, uh, like CA file. And then I have here the, the web page that it gets, the uh, extension pop-up, and all this thing. This is how it looks like. And then I made a project website which should hold all that data. I made the design of it and the front end and the data generation. I plan to leave this open so developers can add stuff there to, to the database and then uh, it generates it. And it goes like right away to the 
to the uh, project website. I don't need to hard code, hard code it or something. Then I made the documentation of that. I split it in, in three sections. And the information about the project, general things, what's its purpose, how it works. And the second one is the contribution, how can developers contribute it. And the third one is about uh, technical aspects like debugging and cloning the repo for new developers. So this is like an example of it. And for the future, I plan to continue my uh, project even after Google Summer of Code. The first thing I need to do, like probably now, I am going to put it on the Mozilla Firefox market. And uh, later I can make it for other browsers like Chromium, but we need to change the API there. And I thought of packaging it in Debian, because while I was here, I learned about packaging and uh, upstreaming and all that stuff. So I think I'm probably going to do that, but not for now, because I want my users to be uh, like all internet users, not just Debian operating system users. Another thing is that I wanted to in integrate it with other free software services like SUSE, uh, Artificial Intelligence, and Thunderbird, and Upstream. Uh, SUSE is a speeching and texting artificial intelligence that gives you responses, and I plan to use that on giving like the suggestions by speech. On my um, extension I, with Thunderbird, I thought it to make like uh, li uh, to work like in Mozilla. But you know, when a user gets an email from a non-free site, then it should send the a suggestions. Use this, don't use this. Like I, I just basically explained. And with Upstream, I thought like uh, all my database should be there to put it there, and uh, it could help Upstream and it could help me. I have my here, my experience with Debian, I heard about Debian last year in a girls' hackathon, and then later in Tirana, in Albania, we made a Debian box question party, a DD was there, and um, we planned on, work on, sorry, on working on it more than uh, with Daniel Pocock. We had in May a, um, a speech together we gave on the biggest open source conference in the whole Balkans. It was about free software. And about my project, I read the whole book to understand it a little bit more, to be more prepared. And I want to thank Debian people for giving me this opportunity to talk here in front of you. And I will hope I'll be a DD soon. Thank you. So, yeah, it's worked. Um, so, uh, before, my name is Elena, Elena Jabuka, and I come from Kosovo. Before I, start, I, before I want to start to present my project, I want to mention that this year in the GSOC, it's the first time that our country is participating. So, uh, it was funny because even when we had to apply for the GSOC, we had to ask Google to add uh, our country in the list. So, you know how... Uh, we, uh, we thought that we didn't have any many more opportunities or any, um, uh, we just thought they are not going to accept us. But hopefully for us, we had um, a great mentor, Daniel Parkock. I think many of, uh, many of you guys know him. And he helped us with everything that we needed for, the, for the, our, our application and everything else. So uh, going back to my project, 
um, my project is basically what I just said right now. So knowing that newcomers to the open source have a lot of problems uh, to to just to set up a development envi environment. Um, sorry, environment. Enver okay, and um, that's why uh, we wanted to create um, to create uh, a GUI. So my project is a new contribu contrib contributor wizard. And it's basically a GUI that it, it will be distributed as a package. And it will help uh, the newcomers to Debian and open source to uh, start their work on and work on the open, open source projects. For example, if you want to apply in Google Summer of Code or Outreach or other programs like this, you will need a lot of things. Because if you are a new, new person, new student coming to Debian or any other um, version of Linux, you will have a lot of problems to start up. So uh, what we want to do with this is to help students to uh, run this computer program in their desktop and help them uh, to understand everything that they need. For example, they will need for sure like how to use IRC. They will need basically a blog to explain their work or a portfolio or anything. So uh, they will need a PGP or uh, and other things like this that we usually use in the open source. So uh, my part of the project in, uh, in this, in, uh, in this month of the Google Summer of Code, it was the, uh, it was the blog module. Uh, basically, I created a module that will generate automatically uh, dy dynamic and static websites. And uh, the other part of it, it was that I did a lot, a lot of research that what students need for, uh, and we should include in the wizard. Um, uh, another thing is that I want to mention is that students students don't know that much for um, they they have a problems using the terminal or installing uh, programs when they usually install Debian. So uh, we we will make sure to add like a tutorials or um, for example a description or something that will help them how to proceed and apply and maybe be a successful applicant for GSOC. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Yaza Shabani, and I also come from Kosovo. Um, I am a student of computer science and engineering. Um, I'm finishing my studies this year, hopefully. Uh, uh, so I am also doing a Google Summer of Code project. Uh, I haven't prepared any slides um, uh, because I didn't see it necessary. Um, so. Uh, my project name is uh, Click to Dial Up from Linux Desktop, and my mentor is Thomas Levy. Uh, he couldn't join it, uh, the conference this year. Um, so, uh, what I've been working in this project is that um, uh, we thought uh, we are three students in this project uh, because it's really a big thing. Um, we started working in this um, last year in uh, the Coder Guides Hackathon in Prizra. Uh, uh, we started doing the project in Python uh, first. Uh, we did some pop-ups and some some really basic things. Uh, so uh, we thought to to continue that. But um, now that the project is bigger and there are three students doing this, uh, it is separated into different things. And um, the two other students um, are doing something else. And we plan to do something like a uh, mobile application, um, uh, but still uh, haven't figured it out. Uh, for the moment, we are doing only a website, uh, a web application, um, and um, w we're working on the existing projects uh, that uh, Google Summer of Code students have done before, like Omnitail and Lumi Lumicall. Um, I am basically working on them and uh, making changes and doing uh, task classes and uh, methods. Uh, 
so um, after we finish that, I think we will continue with the website and hopefully, um, because the GSOC is really uh, coming to an end um, and we have not uh, very much time left, but uh, after this, probably we will be working and doing a mobile app. Um, however, this is all uh, I have to tell uh, right now about my project. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity be to be here and to present before uh, you guys. Thank you. Okay, so can you hear me? No. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I am not actually a Google Summer of Code student, but I've been at an outreach uh, intern around one year ago. So first, before uh, continuing my talk, I'd like to ask how many of you are coming from a social background and has not finished for computer science or science related? Okay, great. So we, we got three other people in the audience. So I am Christy Progr and I'm actually, I finished my university for uh, international affairs and diplomacy. And in the beginning I thought that, it, that this was exactly the school that I'd never ever find something to do with my life. But then I thought that, okay, probably it would be nice if I could just merge it with uh, something that is tech related and free software since during that time I, I was also part of the free software community. So I ended up in the end having a diploma thesis for online diplomacy and this was what kind of opened the doors uh, further to continue and to uh, get to know more uh, for political and uh, internet. So uh, I applied in uh, Mozilla a team for uh, taking part in the outreach, working with the diversity and inclusion team there, building up the strategy for conducting the first language interviews, since one of the barriers that we've had during all this time was that there were people coming from different, um, different countries and not speaking uh, everyone by default English. So uh, trying to have a strategy on how to conduct the language, on how to conduct interviews and to grow up communities in the local aspect would really help to, to take in the further step all the free software initiative and everything that's regarding to that. Um, so this was um, kind of the aspects in the field that I've been doing on the outreach. For those who don't know outreach, it's exactly, it's, it's an internship that is for like, that lasts for three months, it happened twice per year. Um, it has kind of the same uh, ideology as the Google Summer of Code, but um, it's also for people that are not students, but that have uh, finished their, their studies. And uh, beside Outreach and uh, Google Summer of Code, there are also other initiatives that um, helps out students to continue and getting more, more knowledge regarding the free software, such as Real, Real's Girl Summer of Code. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's an internship happening only, only during the summer. It lasts for uh, three, three months, I think. And uh, it's actually only regarding the coding. But till now, I think that for as far as I know, Twitch is the only one that, can, uh, that requires also people that do not have technical uh, skills or at least that have finished, uh, that have not finished for any technical um, subject or degree. So this was also my short presentation, let's say, uh, and the last one, I think, for the session. So if there is anyone in the audience who'd like to make a question, any suggestion or comment, please feel free. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Hello? Uh, Gemini, um, 
so many of us are so interested in the, the edges of Debian and who's coming and are they staying? And you've met so many mentees and talked to so many mentors. Could you share with us a little bit about what is working well and what might work a little better in the future? So uh, there are many newcomers coming uh, from Google Summer of Code. Uh, I think the main thing uh, that should uh, happen is they should be keep motivated and keep working on after the Google Summer of Code. That uh, I feel that that would be one of the major thing uh, they had to do even after the Google Summer of Code. Do you have ideas of how community members or the mentors could do things differently so that they could stay more mo motivated, stay more interested? I think the mentors, it's all about the communication. I think they should keep communicating with the students and keep them uh, giving suggestions and uh, advising them how can they improve further on their projects and how can they keep moving uh, keep uh, moving on the f uh, further with the project so listening to what their interests are and giving them ideas of how to pursue those interests yeah uh, thank you um, I, th I have a question is it I have the impression but I might be wrong so uh, do you have questions for me or students for you all right. <laughs> okay. Sorry, students. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but just for uh, what I've been following for the past years, I think when students enter work with a team, mm -hmm. my impression is that it's easier for them to continue working afterwards. Uh, is it uh, in comparison when pr there are ad hoc projects that sometimes don't continue being developed? And I think. Uh, yeah, then the motivation might fall. But do, do you perceive it or you don't think it makes sense? Currently, I'm not, but I hope to continue it further after my, now I'm currently into early career, so I would prefer continuing it later here. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, I think you didn't understand my question. Okay. It was about the projects in within teams, mm -hmm. like let's say the students that work with a per team or they work inside uh, another team in comparison with just one mentor and one mentee and uh, if that ha uh, reflects on the motivation of the student to continue in that doing work for Debian afterwards do you think there is a relation or not yeah I think I think there, there is there is a I mean the ment you mean the mentor mentee relations keeps going on yeah I'm maybe. not sure whether I got your question properly yeah, maybe <laughs> uh, do you think it's easier for students to be part of a team instead of just one mentor? Yeah, I think they, they get diverse knowledge, so it's better to be in a team hmm. rather than sticking to one mentor. Uh, do, you, do we have some statistics? Uh, how many of the students remained in Debian or not? Because I have had three Google Summer of Code students and three Outreach students. And none of them really remain. They are interested. I, they are using Debian, but uh, my experience, uh, 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 or the result of my experience, was that I tried to give them tasks which are easily to end, which are small tasks. And if they go, then that's not bad. How many people stayed in, in Debian? You mean? Let let you uh, answer. You mean the in from the past? No, how many people stayed in Debian of the students? How many? From the past. From the past, yeah. You don't know the future. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, think I think that you can answer him after the, the session, okay? Because right. we run out. Okay, I would so like to take this opportunity, yeah. to, opportunity to thank, uh, thank all the mentors who made this program successful. And you can feel free to talk with students after the session and give them suggestions or feedback. Thank you. Okay.